cool. Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, we are the G-Men, and um, kind of taking a cue from our group name, uh, we made a website called Full Stack Fantasy. Uh, it's a multi-league fantasy sports app. Um, so similar to Yahoo Sports, DraftKings, that type of thing, uh, same format, but in an effort to kind of get better bragging rights over our friends, we figured if we just you know, made three or four times as many sports, we'd have three or four times a better chance. So uh, that was kind of our motivation. Um, so uh, moving forward, kind of just a little bit more in depth of how it works. Uh, what we've done is we've pulled together uh, all athletes across different leagues and different teams and um, allowed individual users to pick uh, six athletes across sports and across teams. Um, so it really adds like, a different layer and uh, like kind of a cool twist on something that's you know one of the like most fun things to do on the internet, uh, fantasy sports. Um, we display them all on a page. Uh, we have them all loaded into a database that comes from Ajax. Uh, the player can, I mean, uh, it comes from an API from fantasy sports data. Um, player can pick their team, and uh, they're loaded into a huge pool. Uh, that's got every single user that's signed up, and at the end of the week, we tally up the points um, and see who won. So, um, yeah, moving forward. Okay, cool. All right, so talk about some of the technologies we use, uh, as Sean has stated. Uh, we use, uh, also SQL database for handlebars CSS, uh, API, uh, model, and, uh, and probably also Ajax. Yeah. Um, some of the challenges we face utilizing the points across the different sports because it's not a pure, like, you know, we, we have a hockey, a hockey goal is not the same as for the players in basketball, sports and basket, right? Uh, and there are a lot of attributes that we can't be pulling. So, you know, in basketball, you got rebounds. In hockey, you got assists. Different numbers of games. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's, uh, it's, it's quite common. It's a lot of thinking work to actually make sure that it's fair. Um, by server routing efficiency. There were some issues with the routing. Actually, I think that was the biggest challenge we had, just trying to get everything to um, work properly. Uh, push data in a user friendly format sometimes. A lot of data gets pushed, but it's not easily. Uh, discernible what you're uh, when you play, right? Maybe it'll list the player IDs, but the player ID by itself means nothing to the to the user. Uh, there's a lot of data actually just getting all that data from the API or the limited number of calls. Um, you know, trying to arrange the data in a logical way so they're not limiting, you know, just all the players with last name that starts with A to S. Like you want to have a good picture of everybody in there. Time centric and errors. I think that was fresh on like 48 hours at least, just trying to resolve all kinds of errors that we're getting. Organization structure, again, just trying to organize all the various files, bits and pieces uh, we have. And generating a sustainable user base. Um, obviously, when you run this kind of app, it has to be, you have to have a very large user pool. Otherwise, it won't work in the long run because as soon as people start dropping off, Want, you know, some users will not have uh, opponents to be uh, to, to play in. Yeah. Uh, there are some potential legal issues if this does become monetized because is this gambling? Well, I think a lot of you know we we'll see with the fantasy, uh, fan deal, DraftKings, you know, their the servers are offshores, so they're avoiding some legal scrutiny. But at the same time, I think a lot of states are starting to take a closer look at what they're doing. Uh, future. Future directions, mobile development, that, that is the fastest growing area. You want, you want people to have the Android, uh, iOS, hope to be able to use this app. Additional leagues and sports. So, right now, we want to have the NBA, the NHL, and MLB. Uh, those are the only three major sports that are still going on right now. And NFL is not in season. And we'll probably incorporate the NFL probably in August. Right. Uh, in, in August. But by, by the time that happens, the NBA is not happening. Uh, or the NHL. NHL. So, I, and and then uh, just to, just to chime in and jump in a little bit more, like another thing, kind of going along with more leagues that we're trying to do, is just build out different formats and different types of games, add a little more variation to it, um, and just give a little bit more visibility into kind of tracking um, specific player projections, specific uh, 
player kind of historical numbers, things like that. So you know, what we have right now is more of like really just a nice framework to build off of and, and a, a nice platform. And we're hoping eventually to have like, you know, specific league instead of just dumping all users into one league uh, and a little bit more of the options to kind of help you parse through the players and uh, really assemble a team more strategically. Um, it all goes back to big data sets. Uh, that's what a lot of our issues that we ran into are. You know, we're calling a list of every single player on every single team across three different sports. Uh, so, you know, we have to find a way to not only get that information uh, efficiently, but display it efficiently and interact with our server efficiently as well. So, um, it all kind of ties together, but, you know, now that we have the framework down, we're hoping to kind of build out into it and, um, you know, tweak as we go along and just give a little more uh, options and some, more, some different ways to play really. And also about a week ago, I got an email from, because I'm the original one who signed up for it, I got an email from the VP of Sales from Fantasy Data asking us why we want, needed to do the uh, four different sports. And after I told him what we were doing, he came back and said, that's a cool idea. Um, can I take a look at it later on? <laughs> so we'll just, once we have everything set up, we'll, but of course it might have been a sales pitch, but I'm not sure. It's because he also asked if we needed something in bulk type of thing, so maybe the way it is set up now, a lot of times in, in fantasy sports you have fantasy salary, how much each person is worth, and you know, and even though right now we're doing by how many people are being picked, we can also include by by amount of salary, because you don't want to get one guy to get more better uh, players than someone else, so we kind of want to keep it equal and, and see how they do during the week or however long you pick your uh, your time for. But the thing for for them. The uh, fantasy sal salary was on by game, not by player, which I think would have been a better idea, but uh, that's on their side. Yeah, I mean, right now we don't have any limiting factor just to make sure we can actually get it to work. So, you know, most leagues will have either a draft order uh, or, you know, you pick one player, somebody else can't pick another, or a specific amount of money you can only spend uh, with each player being worth a certain amount. Um, because you were able to pull everyone into one big league, we figured that the odds of someone picking the exact two teams the two exact same things are very small, uh, so we don't have that limiting factor built in right now. Um, but as our leagues get smaller, we know that we'll have to either have a draft order, salary cap, or something that really ensures that you don't end up with two of the same team. Um, so we can go ahead and demonstrate it now. Uh, Sorry, but I'm not. Uh, go for it. So, uh, so what we do here is you, know, you just kind of send a basic login, um, and it will bring you over to a draft page. The draft page, uh, once we get there. Um, is really just feeding all the different players that are uh, have active games in this upcoming week um, from our SQL database uh, directly into a table. Um, and what we decided to do, and Mike did a great job building out you know, the, the architecture and the schema, is to update that, um, that table of players uh, at the outset, beginning of each, uh, each week. So that, you know, that, of course that's, that's what happens when you don't put in the right password and stuff. Um, so yes, you know that, that way uh, we have a framework about to keep making that call for a massive amount of players over and over again, um, and then once we display that, uh, we take the players selected by a player, um, push them into an array, and then send that array over via an AJAX call uh, into um, you know our controllers and our models, which uh, allows us again to reduce the number of calls by uh, looping over the array of players that are selected by one individual or one user. Uh, and making that whole thing one call instead of, you know, making one call uh, for each player, if that makes sense. So, you know, a team is one call instead of an individual player uh, being like one interaction one right into, into our SQL database. So you go out there and pick your players. And yeah, if you don't pick a uh, correct people. amount, it'll give you a little error message. Um, and if you do, it kicks you out to the scoreboard. And just another one. Um, and then that's uh, you fear to your team. Yep. Yeah. So I think we have a scoreboard page up there. Uh, I see our timer winding down, so we can take questions as well, Ollie. And then at the end of the week, or end of the period, this is what you'll get. Yeah, so I mean, we're still working on on the um, the you know the, the themes and, and uh, CSS and styling and everything like that. Um, mostly because we had to put uh, 
had some difficulty with uh, the databases and, and the routing, and just getting all the information to go everywhere that needed to. Um, but that's basically the foundation of what we have in the framework, and we're hoping to build it out um, on, on top of what we have so far. Uh, yeah. any, any questions? Can I answer? Um, so the uh, dealing with all the Well, this is free. Uh, you get a fra thousand uh, calls a month per sport. Yeah, so but as you know, a lot of times you can get up to a thousand just on your testing, depending on what you're doing. Right. So, it's super expensive. So, when you're uh, being more efficient about your call, you're sort of like, okay, I need this call, this calls me money, so how do I get the most amount of information? Well, the thing is also during the, uh, the email from the uh, the VP of sales, he did say they can do possibly something customized for what we need, and maybe it can be a cheaper thing down the road or something like that, but it all depends what we need. Efficiency was like the biggest the biggest challenge that we had, just trying to reduce everything, like even in terms of just the speed of things processing. Um, you know, if we have one person in your team and they're taking 10 players, uh, instead of just waiting for you know 10 different rights to go into, into the SQL database, it's something we just really wanted to avoid. Um, so yeah, so that's that was, but that ended up being the most challenging part for us. And that was really with what um, what kind of took us the most time to try and figure out that you know we're still really trying to find the best way to do. Um, you know, hold the user constant, but just get all these players you know stuck in quick. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, that was definitely something that could be mitigated if we dropped a couple bucks and got uh, like some easier data sets, but. Oh, yeah, limitations, smart creativity. Yeah, exactly. And they're all there. So it's like, even with unlimited data, if you had 10 million users, it's all in there. Yep. Yeah, exactly. It's just, it's only, as it scales up, it's only, you know, um, going to get exasperated if you're not being efficient with how you use the camera. That was really great. Thanks. Hold on. What were your tables like? Uh, pretty much only three tables a uh, user's table. That had both the users and the admin person on it. We didn't go. On, we didn't have time to do show you the admin person. The admin person would just uh, update another table. We also had a players table, and then we had a users players table. And on the users players table, all it has was the users and the players and the fantasy sports. Yeah, so it's basically so you can and then you would you could do joins against the other two tables and whatever else to get what you need. Users and players that's confusing. We can think of users as humans and players as like actual athletes. So we basically had. These are the people that are playing your league. These are the actual real players. Um, this is a consolidation of both of those. That's where you get like your team scores, uh, your individual scores. Um, you know, for like different uh, different weeks per you know, my specific team, or, or just uh, you know how everyone on your team is performing, or how everyone on your team is performing. Um, yeah, so that's basically 